You know I tell you all the time that every muscle on a cat's body, everything, everything relates to the raw cat. What keeps me alive in the wild? What's going to help me survive? Whether it is secure food, what's gonna keep me from getting killed or hunt, whatever it is, everything about a cat's body relates to that. So everything that's there is there for a reason. I mean, think about us with our pinky toes, right? Over time, that thing gets smaller and smaller because it has absolutely no function anymore. Everything on a cat has a function, nothing's getting smaller. Smaller. That leads me to one of the biggest parts of a cat's body, their tail. The tail is important for so many reasons, and whether that is the aforementioned survival, whether it's just how they communicate with us, we're gonna talk about that, but I do wanna get into tail positions because I know that's what you guys have been asking about. Here's where I wanna start though. Let's start with, what is a tail? <laughs> well, a tail looks like an extension of the spinal cord because it has vertebrae that go the length of it. They're called caudal vertebra, and that is not part of the lumbar spine, which ends higher up. I always thought that because there were vertebrae in there, that means that the tail is an extension of the spine. But that's where you'd be wrong, Jackson. I'm so ashamed. Don't be, because I'm gonna teach you about it. The spinal cord ends in a place where, that's. this is why if there was an injury to the tail, it wouldn't be like instant paralysis like you would see with the upper spinal cord. Okay, so that's the what is, but what is the, the, the basic use of a tail in a cat's life? The, the basic use, well, the tail is an essential part because it acts as almost a ballast. Think about it if they were tightrope walkers and they would have that big stick and they would go like this all the time. It's exactly what a tail does. So if a cat is walking the top of a, a fence or, or any kind of a small place, a branch or somewhere like that, it's a little skinny branch, that is all the tail's doing. And here's another interesting part of it when you, when you think about how they are made safe when not only they're balancing but when they jump when they jump it's not about the, the tail giving them balance in the air which I'm sure doesn't hurt but where it really comes in handy is when they land when they land and instantly they're on balance they're on point the second they land so they can be ready for another jump they can jump down they can run on that fence or on that branch that's where the tail comes in handy. If you've never heard of the writing mechanism before, well, why not? Because I got a video that talks all about the writing mechanism, so you should watch that. They can find the ground, both with their eyes and what we would call a vestibular apparatus. So that's their ability to find the horizon no matter what direction they're in at that moment. Now, does the tail have anything to do with that writing mechanism in terms of the ability to turn and to glide? And None of it. It comes in handy when they land. Again, they land, tail immediately, rudder, ballast, got it, move. Everything about the tail relates back to the raw cat. Stay alive, hunt at the same time. What gets me away from danger and what gets me towards my prey? This is how the tail works. Another really important part of the tail is the presence of the vibrissae. Vibrissae is just another word for whiskers and cats are covered in whiskers as I talked about in my whisker video. These vibrissae are all over a cat's body and they give them information from things like barometric pressure and temperature and the moving of air around them. The, the way the tail operates with, the, with vibrissae at the very tip, it's letting us know when, when I'm walking around like this and I've got my tail out here, what's back there? And that is hyper important to the raw cat in terms of staying alive. And finally, and this will lead into our tail positions in just a second, there is the sensory element of, of tails. They are really key for communication, and one reason being that the tail is just loaded down with scent glands. So for instance, you know when your cat just sort of figure eights around your body, around your legs, they rub up against you? Yeah, you're getting scent put on you by the, their, the sides and the flanks of their body, but also when that tail just wraps around you, that's just making damn well sure you got a little bit of cat on you when you walk away. That's a sense of ownership. And yes, folks, ownership equals love in the world of cat. Forget about wrapping your tail around me and like leaving a uh, scent just to show us how much you like us. The easy, quick way to do it is to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to participate in the conversation that happens in the comments below. All of these things help make this channel tick and it helps keep me engaged with you guys. Now, of course, nothing happens in a vacuum. Tails work in conjunction with eyes and ears and whiskers when it comes to how they communicate with you. In decoding what your cat's tail is saying, you're getting a real head start into the entire relationship between you and your cat. So that's why we are doing all of this. So let's start here. Let's go straight up in the air. That is a highly confident position. If you think again of cat in the wild, making sure that they don't just sort of transmit 
to a potential predator where they are. I'm actually going to give my age away, but like we used to have these, these little flags on the back of our bikes. They were there to warn cars, hey, there's a kid on a bike over here, you know? That's what basically your cat's tail is doing when they're walking. It. So if you think that they're gonna be out there trying to steer clear of a predator and have their tail straight up in the air, you got another thing coming. So it is this sign of trust. The same way I talk about the cat hug, your cat laying on their back and exposing their midline to you, or the the slow blink, that thing where your cat is closing their eyes to you. All of these are really amazing compliments to us because they are things that show trust. So that is, it's alert though, straight up and down. It's alert, confident, and hey, how you doing? Now, a lot of folks think that the straight up and down is the same thing as the one that I call the backwards question mark. Zoop, just like that. Coming off the end of the cat's body, a little whoop, little crook at the end of the tail. Uh, towards the cat's head. It is sort of the same thing, but the thing that makes it more, I guess, friendly is the fact that it's also relaxed. It's just a, a little more relaxed, a little more inviting, and the thing that I tell you guys, this is the one I want to see the most. Backwards question mark, exclamation point. I wanna see that in your cats. Confident, friendly, how you doing, love you. True or false, a domestic cat is the only cat that can walk with their tail held straight up in the air. Na, 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 na. True, it's true. The very complex calculus when it comes to length and weight of a cat's tail just lets us know that the Herculean effort it would take on a wild cat's part to hold that tail straight up in the air would just be too much and it would drain energy from the rest of their body. So there you have it. Does that hold true to the African wild cat who is the direct cousin of the cat in your lap? Don't know, that's for someone smarter than me. The next tail position we'll talk about is the, you know, not straight up and down, but straight to the horizon. That horizontal tail coming straight out from your cat's body, what does that mean? That is explorative, cautious, but explorative. So they're walking in, they are pretty confident about, but they're just making sure. And, you know, what is this new place I'm looking at? And as we were talking about before, the vibrissae on the, the tip of the tail, just making sure, you know, I trust this world, but you know, can't be too safe in this world. So I'm, I'm heading this way and I'm heading this way at the same time. Like I said, it's still confident. And I think we should look at it this way. The lower a cat's tail gets, the more we're getting into the, yes, I'm exploring, a little less confident. A little, mm, I think something might be a little weird here. I'm still coming into the room, but, you know? So as we go from that straight out and the tail starts coming down a little bit more, a little bit more, I think that the way to look at it is it's not about less confident. You know, exploration also means into the unknown. And I wouldn't be a good cat if I wasn't making sure that I was trusting but verifying at the same time. As that tail starts getting so low down that's now starting to curve a little bit under the body, now we're, we're tilting the scales from explorative and explorative cautious and scared, you know? And finally, when we get tucked to the belly, that is a petrified cat. If you're seeing it, something is not right in their world. You know, here's a, a good example. Let's say you have a toddler. And with the arrival of the toddler in the room, toddling along, your cat's tail goes from straight up to whoop, here we go. It doesn't necessarily have to mean it's tucked to their belly, but just the, the, the tail just getting lower and lower in between their legs lets you know they're scared of that toddler. And that gives you the tools to start to construct a more positive relationship. That's, you know, at the end of the day, those are the things I'm trying to get to you as well. How do we apply this to your life? As good as this is, once we're down here, that is just the, the bat signal to you, the cat signal. Oh, Jackson, the cat signal to you to say, fix something, fix something in your world, in their world, you know? And for instance, if it was that toddler thing, get them up in the world, man. Let them get above those fingers. Make sure they have that way to observe the toddler from above. You'll probably see the tail follow suit. If your cat is having their tail glued to their belly, if, if it were me watching your cat, I would say something traumatic happened. Again, just a, for instance, one of your cats is, uh, the dog walks in the room and your, your cat goes small and tucked. They are hiding from something who's not a potential threat, but that being did something. Something happened between the two of them. That's again, something I want you to take a look at. Most of the time when you see uh, the, the tail glued to the belly, the cat really hates being at the vet or getting into a car. That's the time that they're really gonna get Again, it's, it's a little bit of a panic response. But what about this part? What about the side to side? This is one of the, the, the most central places of miscommunication between 
cats and humans, basically built around the fact that we are still looking at the world through dog-colored glasses. We still think that a wagging tail means a happy fill-in-the-blank. Look, I want you to look at it this way. Starting with a flick, that flick. Now that could be positive or negative, but in a way it's just activation. I've got this influx of energy into the body. Think of a cat like an energetic balloon. And once the energy just gets to that point where they are just full, the tail becomes like that pressure release valve. You know, I'm just full of energy and now I got this going on. Cats will do that when they're watching cat TV. They're watching birds outside and they're like, oh my God, my hunter energy is like, deet, 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 deet. You know, it just starts to twitch. That can happen when they're playing. That can happen when you're in the room because they just have that, that influx of energy that gets them full. Da, da, da. Now, when we start you know, getting into this place, a little whipping, you know, a little like that, now we're going into that place of from being just activated to being, what's the word I want to use, aggrieved or just I'm starting to get a little annoyed, overstimulated by what I'm seeing in the world. It's going from being just, you know, ooh, what's going on here to, yeah, now, now I got a problem. Because where does this lead? It leads to a wag. Once it starts heading to the base of the tail and it's whipping from the base of the tail, then you got to watch out. Now we're talking about a cat that is highly overstimulated and just really not happy about that level of stimulation. Their whole body is on fire at this point. And every little input of stimulus that comes from the outside world to this already full balloon where the pressure valve is going off and it's not even helping anymore, this is when if you go to pet your cat at that moment, you will get bit. Or they're just gonna run away and not trust your touch anymore. But usually that's where the overstimulation really comes to a head. And some of you guys will say to me, well, my cat's tail is always going. That could be true, but it's the action itself. You know, if your cat's tail is always just doing a little bit of this, and you know, I've known plenty of cats who have that going on. And don't forget, I've also got some products that can help to that degree. If you're seeing the swishing of the tail or the, the tucking of the tail, uh, we have all of our solutions play into that as well. Better flower essence solutions. You can find out more about them on my website, jacksongalaxy.com. But you can try something like Stress Stopper, which in those times of like cat needing a timeout, you accompany that with Stress Stopper to vibrationally bring down the temperature in their bodies to help them just sort of regulate again. If you you have a cat who's constantly got tail to the belly syndrome. We have one called Scaredy Cat, which will help a lot. Timeouts are there to recenter the body. And when you're seeing this, that's letting you know it is time to call it a day. You know, it's, it's like if I, if I were to start yelling at you right now, if I was a proper human, I'd say, okay, I got to go count to 10. That's the exact equivalent. If your cat's tail is wagging like that, go count to 10. And let me help you count to 10. We'll put you in a timeout. For, it's, sometimes it can be for a few minutes. But take the cue, folks. Take the cue. And if you want to know more about what your cat is thinking at all times, whether it's their tails, their eyes, their whiskers, or all those other things, pick up a copy of Total Cat Mojo. It'll help explain all of it. You also have to look at context, you know, and this is why I always want to be careful when I say to you, this always means this. It's like me saying a hiss always means I'm pissed off, you know, because some cats in their development phase never learned what a hiss was. And so they hiss in totally inappropriate times, you know. Again, look at context. What is going on in the world? It, that is not a random thing. And that's one of the words I really want you guys to get out of your vocabulary is random. Randomly, my cat's tail started going. No, something is happening in that room, in the space, out the window, somewhere. The thing that you would try to do is quiet their world. Lead them to a place where you can give them treats or food or something like that and in a nice, quiet, darkened space. When you see this vibrating thing, most folks will panic because this, when a cat backs up to a vertical surface, means the cat is spraying. This is the spray. You see that happening, that really tight vibration and there's a wall anywhere nearby or anything that's vertical? That's the spray. The reason that this is happening is because it's not just pee. It's not like your cat is just peeing against the wall. They are actually concentrating everything in here so that that pee that comes out is small and highly potent, like highly concentrated. Because if a cat wants to leave their mark on something and make sure it doesn't go away, that's the way to do it. Now, if they walk up to you and they're like, hi, that's actually just an excitement. It's just a happy, I'm so happy to see you. You are my person. So if your cat walks up to you, and a lot of times they'll even back up to you and, and do this, and don't, you'll have that moment, you're like, oh my God, are you gonna pee on me? Did you just pee on me? The answer being most of the times, no. If somebody were to walk up behind you and go, boo, and you're like, ah, you know, 
Cat does that too, but their whole body does it. The vibrissae do it as well. The tail does it, and that's that bottle brush tail. The, the tail that we see most often associated with the quote Halloween cat, arched back, everything puffed out, tail like this, that's why we call it bottle brush. Yes, it's a reflex, and of course the, the tail puffs out because they're scared, but it's also a way of that nature says, okay, if I'm really scared for my life, I'm going to try to look bigger than I am. I am going to try to look bigger and menacing in this moment so that maybe that'll scare you off. What did you guys see? What happened? Why are you so fluffy? Oh, oh, there's a cat. Oh. That is why the bottle brush tail exists. That curved back, that puffed out body, and that puffed out tail can only be, mean one thing. You just scared me and I'm gonna scare you back. Don't forget, all of those positions and all of the motions that go along with it and how your cat uses it differs from cat to cat based on their experience in the world. Just really want you to take into consideration all the stuff I just taught you is based on context also. Think about it this way. If you had a child and all of a sudden one day they are just going at their nails, man. They are just, just butchering their fingers to the point where they're down to the cuticles. You would go, wow, uh, something's going on here that is causing Joey to like, Chew his nails. Same basic principle applies to your cats. And I've given you tons of tools to calm cats and to uh, make your cats happier in your home and trusting of you and other animals. So check out that content as well. All right, everybody, until next time, keep those comments coming. This video is a direct result of the comments that are on the bottom of videos. All you ever have to say, capital letters, topic for a video. Can you make a video on? And I am looking down there and this is where we get our ideas from. So again, thank you all for getting us to 2 million subscribers. Who would have thought when we started this channel back in 2009 that it would get to where it is today? Again, thank you. Until next time, my tailless friends. Don't be jealous of your cat's tail just because it does so many things. It's okay, you have good qualities too. All light, all love, all mojo to you. Mwah. Yeah.